Good morning and welcome to Recalibrate from Tabernacle to Tree. Uh, this morning we are going to be looking at the basin or the lavar um, and it is located in Exodus chapter 30 starting in verse 17. So I'll, I'll go ahead and read that section for us. The Lord said to Moses, you shall also make a basin of bronze with its stand of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar and you shall put water in it with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash, their, they shall wash with water, so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet, so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. So, I don't know if you caught that, but uh, the bronze basin is a big deal. It's mentioned twice in that section that if Aaron and his sons did not wash, that they would die. And uh, it's, again, when we're talking about all stuff with tabernacle, um, it's magnifying the holiness of God and the sinfulness of man, and that it's no joke. It's not, a, it's not something to take lightly, um, the, the commands that God's giving his people, because they're very serious, because um, the consequences for sin are very serious. And so um, it's just another... It's just another glimpse into the holiness of God. And so we're talking about this guy right here, the bronze basin. So it was um, very, uh, very specially located between the tabernacle, or sorry, between the, the, the holy, um, the, the meeting place, sorry, and then the altar. And it was very important because before the priests like Aaron and his sons were to do anything, they were to wash and they're to wash their hands and their feet in the altar so that they wouldn't die and that they would be acceptable before the Lord. And so um, there's a couple of awesome, um, there's, a, there's, a, well, there's, of course, there's lots to, to talk about um, regarding the bronze basin. Um, but there's some things we can look at before. So it was very important that the, that the priests who were ministering were to have clean hands and clean feet. Um, and it's interesting that it only talks about hands and feet. And the reason why it's only talking about hands and feet is because um, later on, or earlier on, or later on, when the rules are, or when the laws are given about, um, when the laws are given about um, the ordination of the priests, so for Aaron and his sons, what they had to do, um, the priests before, because they were given a whole bunch of, uh, of clothing to wear, this very specific clothing that God had instructed them to wear, and before any of that happened, before they were um, kind of ordained in that role, they had to bathe completely, to have a complete bath. And that was to symbolically show um, that they were they're justified. So this is where the parallel between what's going on there and the parallel what happens in the New Testament is going on. So their, their total bath represented their total justification. So like how... When we accept Christ, we are completely justified and we are made right in his sight. We are eternally forgiven. But then the priests were required to also wash their hands and feet daily before they ministered in the tabernacle area. And the reason why that is important is because that is signifying the need to be holy before the Lord. Um, because in the everyday life, their hands would get dirty by, you know, by uh, preparing food or work. Um, and likewise, their feet would get dirty with um, walking in their sandals and bringing dirt and dust everywhere. And so it was important that they were clean. It was important for a number of reasons. Um, they were required to daily wash their hands and feet from daily filth of everyday living. And the symbolism for us today, looking at this, is we. So if we kind of point this in the New Testament, likewise, when we come to faith in Christ, we are justified. We are forgiven of our sin eternally. Um, and when we're forgiven eternally, we are sealed, but we still live in a sinful world where we regularly are contaminated by the sin of the world and we're in need of daily washing. And this is important. This is emphasized a lot in the Bible, the need of daily washing, of daily cleaning. And so this bronze basin is a symbol of a need for continual cleaning um, before God um, in their lives. And uh, basically... In the New Testament, Jesus points to this as well. If you want to read a really cool parallel, um, I'll actually, I won't, I won't read it, but I'll, I'll just point to it so that you can go and look yourself and you can kind of like see the similarities. 
So if you were to go to John chapter 13, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet, read John 13, and then read in the context of the bronze basin, and then also talking about um, the, the, uh, the ordinance for the, sorry, for the, uh, for the priests, and read the parallels there. And it's very, it's very cool. I won't spoil it. I'll let you go and look for it yourself. It's, it's, very, it's very symmetrical. And so what this can mean for us today, what this can um, help us understand a bit more, is that um, we, are, we are justified by God, by his death. We are forgiven eternally. But there is still a need, there is still a call for us to daily come to God and to daily be cleaned by God. We're cleaned by, the, by being in God's word. We're cleaned by going before God and to ask for forgiveness for our sins and to um, recognize that God is holy and we are not, basically. Um, it, it's wrong for us to assume that we can just be forgiven once and then there's no longer a need to continually be cleaned afterwards, if that makes sense. This whole idea of being cleaned is exactly what sanctification is. Sanctification is in the already not yet phase where we are justified, but it's not good enough for us to just, okay, I'm saved. Now I'm, I'm going to do my own thing and I'm not going to follow God in all of the ways that he's, to he's told me to. But there's an understanding that when we come to know God, then we grow to love him more and we grow to be more like him. And that happens through the daily washing of our hearts before him. Um, I wrote here, we enjoy the greatest fellowship with God when we daily wash our hands. When we daily acknowledge that just by, for just to make this a little more applicable, when we daily acknowledge that just, just one day in Canada is enough for us to be unclean because we are daily going in and out and we're experiencing the effects of sin in a broken world. And that's enough. That's enough sin that we, we need cleaning afterwards daily. Maybe this isn't emphasized enough. Maybe we don't think about this enough. The need to keep very short accounts with God because he is so holy and he also delights in our humble pleas for cleaning in his word. And in fact, another, another example of this is in Matthew 5, 8, when Jesus is on the, giving the Sermon on the Mount and he's giving the Beatitudes, he says in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. There's this idea that when we're pursuing being clean, when we're pursuing more than just, it's more than just, um, I'm saved, now I'm done. It's more than that. It's the pursuit of holiness. It's the pursuit of God. And that happens in our daily um, cleansing from the world because we're being transformed from one degree to another. The Bible talks about putting off the old creation and being in the new. Second Corinthians 5.17 talks about um, uh, being a new creation in Christ. And that's the whole idea of sanctification, is that we're growing from one nature to another, a nature of an old, of the flesh that is corrupt um, and growing into a new uh, character, a new creation that is more like God. And that can only happen when we understand that we have a role to play in daily coming before God, recognizing that we are in need of cleaning every day and that we can't go, we can't risk going a day without this. And uh, that's why I say keeping short accounts. Um, if, if, if we had our eyes open to see how much sin comes into our day <laughs> on a daily basis, I believe it would be, it would be so much more um, of a priority in our list. But as it is, we're, you know, we're dealing with, we're, we're dealing with uh, a sin that we don't always see or we're not always aware of. And that's part of coming to God and asking for him to open our eyes and show us how can we be clean from this? How can we be saved from this? And so I, I, try to, I try to do the most uh, succinct version I could, but it just shows that there's so much more to see here if we'll take the time to look. And I hope that it can maybe um, whet your appetite a bit to dive in more and just see more of what the implications of daily cleaning and washing are. Um, but just for, just for this morning, just focus on the fact that coming to God daily by reading, because when we read his word, we're looking into a mirror that's showing us who we are, which is weak people, and it shows who God is as a strong God and a wonderful Savior who can forgive us and save us. And that drives us to understand that we need to be different. We need to be changed. We need to be cleaned from one way to another, from the old to the new. And so that is a little bit into 
uh, the bronze basin. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining this morning. I'm just going to pray to close off our time. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for every single part of the tabernacle that you have written for our instruction. And I pray, Lord, that we see more and more how it's not just an Old Testament um, thing that no longer has any implications for us um, nowadays. I pray, Lord, that we would continue to look, we continue to read, and we continue to ask, Lord, for you to open our eyes to see um, how, how wonderful your scripture is connected. From Old Testament to New Testament, it is perfectly connected because it's perfectly written by you for us, for anyone to be able to read and understand. And I pray, Lord, that you give us that understanding today. I pray that you would continue to give us the ability, Lord, to, to look into your word and to find wonderful truth and wonderful promises for us. I pray, Lord, that we would take to heart the need to come before you daily to be cleaned. Um, and not to assume that we don't need that, but to re recognize more and more how important that is. And that you just long for us, God, to come to you with our, with our hearts, no matter where they are. Um, Lord, they're not too far for you to forgive. They're not too, too dirty for you to clean. And so I thank you for that. And I pray that that would be an encouragement for all of us today. Use your word, Lord, today to lead people closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless and have a great rest of your day.